life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundant, life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Welcome to Z Church. We're so glad you've chosen to worship with us today. Surely Pastor Larry Higgins or Huggins will be sharing the message, the gift more than precious than gold. Whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or Zoom, we encourage you to participate with a comment. You're all, you can also submit a prayer request in the comments for prayer during the service, or you can email us at info at zchurch.live. We will be celebrating communion, so pre please prepare the communion elements of bread and juice or use whatever you have. We invite you to stay for our afterglow fellowship time immediately, immediately following the service. Would you lead us in prayer, Maria? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you are a God of miracles. We thank you that you are the God of more than enough, Lord. And you have so many things in store for us. Lord, we unite our faith with all our audience, Lord for every need that they have, that you will show your love, your favor, your mercy and grace on each and every one of them, regardless of natural circumstances and the world, Lord. We do trust in you, Lord. We give to you every area that we are doubting or we're lacking faith, that we can cooperate with you for what you have in store, Lord God. Be glorified over ourselves, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joseph, bring us in prayer. Let's start a celebration. Thank you, Maria. I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to wish everyone a happy April Z Church Day because all of us on here are fools for the Lord. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This track here is called Excellent. Come on. Que excelente es tu nombre. Come on, let's go. of the earth now rejoice all the people of God sing his praise everything that has breath shout for joy everything that is beautiful belongs to you yes oh the earth it is the Lord's everything is yours everything is yours you are excellent oh is yours everything is yours you are excellent how excellent is your name how excellent is your name how excellent is your name all of the earth say how excellent is your name how excellent is your name how excellent is your name all of the earth say oh oh Of the, earth now All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing His praise. All the of God sing his praise. Everything that has breath shout for joy. Everything that is beautiful belongs to you. Yes, oh, the earth it is the Lord's. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. 
are excellent. Oh, the earth it is the Lord's. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are excellent. How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? Come on! How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, All of the earth say, Oh Lord, oh Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Praise his, praise his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Sing to the Lord for he has done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Come on. Repeat after me. Come on. All the earth is yours. Everything is yours. You have created all things and made it good. All the earth is yours, everything is yours. Come on! You have created all things and made it good. Look up! All the earth is yours, everything is yours. All the earth is yours. All things and made it good. Come on! All the earth is yours, everything is yours. All the earth is yours, everything 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 is yours, you are excellent, Lord. Excellent home, the earth it is the Lord's. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are excellent home, the earth it is the Lord's. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are excellent. How excellent is yon? How excellent is yon? How excellent is yon? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, all of the earth say. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, the next yeah. track right here is Praise the Lord. Sing, sing along portion of the show here of the service. I give myself away. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here we go. If you'd like to sing along, the lyrics are in the chat. Very simple song. Come on. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away I give myself away so you 
can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. Desires revealed in me. I give myself away. Give myself away. I give myself away. So you can use me. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice, all my dreams, all my plans, I place them in your hands, Lord. myself away Amen. Wow, that's precious. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, are you ready to always be an overcomer, to learn to win, 
Strengthen your love walk. Strengthen your faith. Go higher. Go further. Expect more. I'm so glad to introduce to you our pastors, Larry and Loretta Huggins. Would you please put your hands together and give them a warm welcome? Amen. Amen. Listen, everybody, un unmute your mic and let's make some noise for Jesus. Come on, praise yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, the the revival is online. Yes. Yeah, they may be aware that there's more voices here than yours and mine. Ooh. Let's so, so try that saying. again. Let's try it again and see if we hear those voices again. Okay. Everyone, pray. Glory, glory, glory. I'll put you in the middle. There you go. Hey, there you wow. go. Are you going to block in the Praise way? God. <laughs> okay, we're going to go. We're ready, Pastor, we're going to go towards us. A little more. Now let's praise God again. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise, praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, well, you, you, know, you, you know everybody. This is uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. This is Mari Gracia. The, the, no. no, this is Mari Gracia, yeah. the yeah. niece of uh, Anna Maria, and of course, uh, Mary. Yes, Mary. 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 Yeah. Let's try this again, Pastor. Who are you? Um. Pastor Larry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sebastian, Marianne, Mari Gracia, yeah. and Ana Maria. And Pastor Loretta. Pastor. All righty. Good to see you all together. Praise That's the Lord. you and I. You oh can't go God. any further, but you can go back I here. So, I am so happy to have. Pastor Loretta, come a little closer. I'm so happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, perhaps we'll say something real quick, darling. Yeah, Sebastian, say hello. Hello. Can you hold that and pass it to your sister? <clears throat> you having a good time in Barcelona? Yes, yes. we are so thankful to be here. So blessed. Up, so blessed. And uh, with my family, my cousin, that like my twin, yes. and my mom. Here's your mom, mom, your beautiful mom. And I haven't seen my mom in more than a year and three months. So I'm just happy to be reunited. And I think Javier must be lonely. <laughs> Javier, say something. Oh, it's bittersweet. I'm sad my dear wife is not here, but I'm so happy she is with uh, Marianne and Sebastian. I know they're <laughs> passing a great time together. So it's bittersweet. Say something, darling, please. Uh, In Spanish. And we send a lot of love to all of you, our C Church family. We love you and we send you all of our blessings. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And hello to all of our family and friends on YouTube and Facebook and all the social media. We love you. We've got a great, great service in store. So uh, it's not too late to tell your friends to tune in, come to zchurch.life. And, and receive a blessing. And this is why they should join Z Church. Look at this beautiful family. Pastor Loretta, could you get in the picture one more time, quick? Yeah. Where do you want? Get over here right near here? me. Get over here near me. All right. No, but when, then I lose. No, no. Look at that. That's perfect. Oh. Mm. Thank <laughs> you. Oh. Beautiful Everybody. picture. <laughs> <laughs> Screenshot. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> well, praise God. Praise Thank God. You so much. Thank Thank you. You. Thanks. Pastor Loretta. So Pastor much. Loretta, I, I don't think your microphone is working. You didn't turn it on, did you? I didn't turn it on. Thank you, Pastor Sharon. There you go. That was such a beautiful picture, though. <laughs> Thank you. You know, what a blessing. And again, and I say that because it's true, that's yet another reason why you should make Z Church your online family. We understand that you may have churches that you go to, uh, brick and mortar, but your online church, 
We'd love to have you a part of our family. I have to say something before I step away. Joseph, my Lord, you took us into the presence of God. Yes, you did. Oh, my Beautiful. goodness. Praise yeah. the name and the, of and Jesus. And the pre-service prayer was so exceptional. Yes. Uh, singing in the spirit. Yes. It, it was just went on and on. It was heavenly. There were harmonies. And uh, the anointing is so strong right here. And then right Joseph, Joseph took us even further. Yes. So we're going to have a great service. We're not going to delay any further. No. Unless you have something more no, to say. No, I just want to say to our entire Z team, even Steve did a great announcement. And Every, everybody was great as usual. One more thing, please. If you have a prayer request, please make sure you turn that prayer request in. Pastor, I'm going to just take like maybe 30 seconds. You may recall last week I mentioned and asked for prayer for a friends of ours that we had developed friendship with, excuse me, when we lived in Washington, D.C. And we have maintained that friendship. Well, about two weeks ago, they uh, about less than two weeks, they called and said, please, I need your help. You've got to pray for my brother-in-law, Tom. He's at death's doors and so forth and so on. Yeah. Well, we prayed that Saturday. And then I get a message from her on Sunday saying, well, I'm just going to read what she said. So no one get all upset. She said, pop the bottle of champagne from death's doors to them pulling the tubes out that very same day. Isn't that what God does? Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. You know, unmute yourself and let's just thank God Amen. for that miracle. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Javier, you say something? Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Holy Ghost, and dear Son, for your immense love. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, listen, we have a great, great service for you. I'm very excited about this. We're going to talk about the gift that is more precious than gold. And I'm going to go ahead and give it away. That gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift you can't buy. It's a gift that you cannot put a value on. It's invaluable. It is worth far more than gold. And once we receive the Holy Spirit and learn how to walk with the Holy Spirit, how to cooperate with Him, things begin to happen that money can't buy. Amazing things begin to happen by the Spirit. And so we're gonna, I'm going to pray for you right now, <clears throat> everyone online. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for the anointing that comes on all of us to open our minds, our eyes, our ears, and hearts to see, hear, and understand what you are saying to us so that we might be found doing your will from the heart and receiving all the benefits that you promised us in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. hello, amen. Amen. amen, thank God, amen, amen, amen. Uh, tongues is the gateway to spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts begin with speaking in tongues. No one will ever manifest the gifts appropriately or to any depth without the gift of praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is the gift that empowers us and activates us. Now, I say that over and over and over because it needs to be stressed. People need to place a high value on speaking in tongues. And I know a lot of people kind of marginalize it. Well, it's not for me. It might be for you. No, honey, this gift is for everyone. Amen. You and your children, as many as far off as the Lord our God should call. Jesus said, Evil men know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask Him? So the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is yours for the asking. Praise God. Praise now let me read you a scripture, John 16, 7. This is Jesus after He was raised from the dead. All right, get the timeline. He said, I tell you the truth, it's expedient. That means it's better for you that I go away he was leaving the earth. For if I go not away, the comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, these are some of the last instructions that Jesus gave us, his church. 
And he said, listen, I'm leaving because it's better that I do. Because if I don't, I won't be able to send the Holy Spirit to you. Now think about this for a moment. If you had your choice of Jesus living here on the earth, walking upon the earth like he did in Israel on the shore of Galilee and Capernaum and, you know, different places. I guess today he could go a lot further, but in those days he, he just kind of walked around Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, those areas. Now, would you rather have Jesus here in the flesh or have the Holy Spirit? Now, before you answer, Jesus said, it's better that I go away. When Jesus was here upon the earth, he was not omniscient. He could not be every place at once. So if he was in Israel or were in Israel, and you were, say, in uh, Japan where Chris is, it would be difficult to get to Jesus. And where Jesus was is where the healing took place, the miracles took place, the signs and wonders. So you would have to go to where Jesus is. But God has poured out the Holy Spirit on all of us in Japan and South America and the Netherlands, uh, all, over, all over the world, all over the world. And we have God with us in the form of the Holy Spirit, and that's better. Now, to reject the Holy Spirit is a very serious wrong. It's a very serious. It's not just a mistake. People do that consciously. Well, I don't want the Holy Spirit. I don't want tongues. Be careful. <laughs> treading, on, treading on thin ice there. We need to receive the gift that God gave, and God gave us the Holy Spirit. Praise Amen. God. Now, it, Amen. it's also the very last thing, the very last thing, the last instruction that Jesus gave us before he went to heaven was this. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. So go tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you receive or until you be endued, I like that, with power from on high. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. There is no spiritual endowment without the Holy Spirit. That's right. Thank you, Lord. There's no, for the Holy there's no Spirit. spiritual endowment without the Holy Spirit. So to separate yourself from the Holy Spirit and say, well, walking in the Spirit, now nah, that's for you super spiritual people, you Pentecostal butts, that's not for me. I've got the Bible, you know. Well, I have the Bible too, but the Spirit and the Word agree, and you need both. Yes. You need equal Amen. measure of the Word and the Spirit. The letter killeth, but the Spirit give, gives life. There's too much dead religion in the world. And I'm, I'm not talking about other religions. I'm talking about Christianity. Some churches, God help them, are so dead. There's no life. Their songs are dead. Their sermons are dead. And, and people just don't have any joy. I could not exist in a church that didn't worship God in the Spirit. The Bible says that true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth, in spirit and the word, in spirit and the word. Thank God we're a word Amen. church. The church is a word church. I'm a word preacher, but I'm more than that. I've got the best of both worlds. I've got a dose of the word, and i got a dose of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The spirit and the word agree. Now, uh, here's, uh, here's the very, very, very last thing that Jesus said before he ascended. Wouldn't you agree with me that when someone is departing and you're never going to see them again, or it's going to be a long, long time before you see them, that their last words, their last instructions are probably the most important instructions? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that when Jesus left, his last instruction wouldn't, wasn't, you know, well, it's beautiful sunshine, enjoy it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to heaven, so uh, so why don't you go back and go waiting in the Sea of Galilee? Do something fun. No, 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 no. He gave some serious instruction, wow. some very important instruction. And he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then he went into Ooh, what a dramatic exit, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reenact it here a little bit, all right? You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
<laughs> and he went up to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And they're looking up like this. Wow, praise God. The last instruction. Don't you know that that rang in their hearts? Don't you know that that was planted in their very souls, in the marrow of their bones? We need to get it inside of us. Power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Now, let me tell you something. When you're praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost manifests. When you're praying in tongues, you activate the power of God. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Praying in tongues is how those rivers are activated and begin to come out of you, and they come out of you with power. You can be a born-again Christian. Listen, you can be a spirit-filled Christian, but if you don't pray in tongues, you don't get the benefits of those who do pray in tongues. True. Preach it. Amen. I know a lot of people that got filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I prayed a couple of times since then. No, no, no. The Apostle Paul, who was the most dynamic apostle of all apostles, said, I pray in tongues more than ye all. Praise God. The secret to getting things done for Jesus, the secret for power, it's not a secret, <laughs> the secret for manifesting the gifts and flowing in the Spirit is praying in tongues. Now, if you don't like hearing about tongues and praying in tongues, you're going to be uncomfortable listening to me preach because that's what I talk about. Yes, I talk about it often. Do we talk about other things? Yes, we do. But we start our services praying in tongues, and we believe in praying in tongues. My wife and I pray in tongues every day and throughout the day. We believe in it. And the reason we're saying this is we want you to grow. Yes. And we want you to flow. And we want you to know the secret of having power. And as I said, it's not a secret. Jesus announced it to everyone. You will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is being poured out on you right now. All you have to do is receive. Praise God. Right now, you don't have to go to Nepal and go on a mountain and meditate with a guru to get power. You don't have to go through some sort of a 12-step program to receive power. All you need to do is open your heart and ask God for the gift of the Holy Ghost, and He will pour it out. He is pouring it out on you right now, right no now. matter where you are. There are people listening and watching right now in so many different places in the world. We have people who watch from Africa, Pakistan, India, all over, and in uh, the Netherlands, and in the United States, in Peru. Praise God. And no matter where you are, if I named one of those places or if I didn't, if you are on planet Earth, God is pouring out the Holy Spirit on all flesh. If you're flesh, he's pouring it out on you. God. God doesn't pour out his Spirit on some crystal for you to hang around your neck or some incense stick that you can burn, or some psychedelic poster that you can put on your wall. He pours it out on flesh. People seek power in all these crazy places, all those things I just named. And it breaks my heart because they're looking in the wrong place. They want power. They want the supernatural. They want to have a connection with God, but Jesus is the door and the Holy Spirit is the source of power. Yes, he is. Yes. Amen. Dear heart, don't, there, there's a hundred miles of bad road ahead of you if you're trying to get enlightenment at some, uh, I don't know what they call those things when all the people get together and meditate and all that. They pay a bunch of money to go out on some retreat and, and uh, you know, it's great to hug trees and walk bar barefoot through the grass and wade in the sea and chant home, 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 or whatever they do. But I'm telling you, that's not how you get power, sweetheart. Wake up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Indeed. Go ahead. Lift your hands. And praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said, and this gets people. Jesus said that believers, these signs shall follow believers. They that believe, they shall speak with new tongues, other tongues. Mm -hmm. Believers. You say, well, I'm a believer, but I don't speak in tongues. Well, you're believing part of the Bible, I agree. 
<laughs> but you're not believing the whole thing. A lot, a lot of people, most of us believe part of it. We believe certain parts of it. The good, we call ourselves full gospel. We are to call ourselves partial gospel. <laughs> you know, it's like a buffet. I, I pick some of this and some of that, and I'll leave that alone. And, and I'm going to have a little of this word salad over here, but I don't want this Holy Ghost secret sauce. <laughs> no, no, no. We need to eat the whole thing. Praise God. God, God spread a banquet before us, and we need to, we need to have the whole thing. And, and, uh, Jesus said, these, Jesus said, these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall. That's the strongest assertion in the English language. If you set out to believe the Bible, to believe everything Jesus said, to believe those instructions, here's where it will end up. You will speak with other tongues. If you keep believing, and once you read it and you start reading about the Holy Spirit and how he is poured out on the day of Pentecost and every man body begin to speak in tongues and this gift is for you and your family, you begin to read that and believe that like you believe John 3.16, then you will end up speaking in tongues. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. But when you stop believing, then the Holy Spirit is stopped in your life. He's in there. He's never going to leave you. But he's dormant. He wants to walk with you. He wants to guide you. He wants to give you power. He wants to lead you into all truth and all understanding. But you've got to allow him to get outside where he can guide you. The guide goes before. Well, how do you get him outside of you? You open up this gate right here, and he comes out. Praying in tongues is the gateway to walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's where the flow is coming out of you, and you follow that flow. It's so easy. This is the gift that is more precious than gold, the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues cannot be bought. We can't be like that sorcerer who tried to pay Paul money to get that gift. He saw the power. He wanted the power. And he said, well, I'm going to give up on all this sorcery, and I want to take the money that I've earned from, from all this quackery, and I'm going to give it to you so you can give me real power. And Paul rebuked him because you can't buy it. It's free. Hallelujah. Freely you receive, freely give. I need to hear an amen from somebody. Come on. Come amen. on. Let me hear an amen. Amen. got real amen. amen people here. Amen. Boy, that feels, that feels really good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's talk about self-edification. The word edified means to build yourself up. It's like building a building or building a house. And you start with the foundation and you raise the walls and the beams and the trusses and the joist and all that kind of stuff. And we are a, a house for the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple or the house of the Holy Spirit. And we need to build ourselves up in the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost doesn't need any building up. He's complete. He's God. But we need to be built up where we can accommodate the Holy Spirit and not just give him a little tiny place to live in our lives, but give him access to everything we are and give more as we can. So here's how that happens. First Corinthians 14, 4, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Yeah. Now, there are two kinds of speaking in tongues. Number one is private, personal, devotional. It's the way you co communicate with God. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. It's heart-to-heart -heart communication, private devotion. That's where most of your tongue talking will take place. But there is a place for praying together in unity in the public assembly, like on the day of Pentecost, when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they all began speaking with other tongues. And the Apostle Paul, I'll get into this one day, uh, gave very careful instructions, very thorough instructions about the when, where, how, and how much to speak in tongues publicly. And there were certain parameters. There were certain limitations. But when it comes to your personal prayer life, there's no limit. You can go overboard, and I hope you do. When I was first baptized with the Holy Ghost, I lived in the mountains of Arkansas, the Ozarks, 
and I had 890,000 contiguous acres of wilderness that might may as well be, have belonged to me. I was a park resident. I lived inside of the park with special privileges, and I could go anywhere I wanted to, and I would just walk through the mountains and the woods and the hollers and the streams, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. Sometimes I'd do it all night long. I, it was such a wonderful gift. I, I, I thought, man, if I stop, I might lose it. I never ever want to lose this. So I just prayed and prayed and prayed. What a wonderful time in my life. And everyone needs to have a season like that. Jesus had a season. He went out for 40 days in the wilderness and communed with his father. And I pray that somehow you don't have to go to some Buddhist ashram. That's the word I was looking for. All you need to do is find a place where you can pray your own prayer closet or along the beach or some hiking trail, uh, somewhere where you feel really comfortable and free and just forget about everybody. Don't be worried about what people think about you. Your happiness is not found inside of someone else's head. <laughs> Don't, it doesn't make a difference what they think. About 90% of the people on earth are, cr are crazy anyway. They're nuts anyway. <laughs> Amen. So why do you care what they think? Hallelujah. And those people who, who count, they're going to be all for it. They're going to celebrate you. The people who celebrate what you're doing, uh, they're, they're not going to be offended by you praying in tongues and worshiping God and spending time with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, Jude 120, but you, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, it builds you up. There's an old song that used to go, I'm working on a building. It's got a true foundation. <laughs> I'm working on a building for my Lord. I never get tired working on a building. Praise God. And we're always working on that building. I'm trying to get my screen to work here, and it's not cooperating with me. Yeah, I'll go back to this. It's vanity. I didn't want to have to wear these glasses. Oh, well, I didn't need that pride anyway. <laughs> right? That Pastor Loretta agreed with me. Hallelujah. That's your job. Let me talk to Let me throw something out to you. This thing about praying in tongues. You can actually learn how to pray in tongues better. You can learn it. It's not just 100% a gift. The Holy Spirit is a gift, but we have something to do with it. On the day of Pentecost, they began to pray. They began to pray as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Apostle Paul said, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. And so you see, there's something that you have to do with the tongues. The utterance comes from God, the impetus, that's the source. But the way it comes out of you, you have control over that, just like you have control over a spigot, just like you have control over an instrument that you would play. And you will tune up that instrument so that it plays well. And you'll learn how to play that instrument so you could worship God. Your body is an instrument. Your tongue is an instrument. You were designed to give God glory. So why wouldn't you want to learn how to do it better? Yes. Don't just get stuck at one place. Just be a one-note person. Ding, 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 ding. Wouldn't it be good to have a ring-a-ding-a-ding, ding-a-ding-dong-ding? -a -ding? <laughs> wouldn't it be good to have a little more vocabulary, a little more expression? Wouldn't that be great? If you could could kind of shape and, and swell and move and flow and go further and more and wider and deeper. Oh, hallelujah. There is so much waiting for you. Once you start swimming out into the deep, you know, the, the deep calleth unto deep. The great John G. Lake, who had more miracles than anyone in the 20th century a real spiritual giant, a Pentecostal giant. He said, the most advanced spiritual men and women upon this earth are like so many children prattling along the shore of the sea of eternal life. Prattling, you know, wading and splashing and playing in the shallow end. And have you noticed that kids in the shallow end, they splash and they holler and they jump and they make waves and they're having so much fun. But when people go out into the deep, they don't splash around anymore. They move with purpose and they move, uh, they control their direction and their movements and what they're doing. 
And there is a deep that calls into deep. I know it's fun to laugh. There's been laughing revivals. It's prattling around the sea of eternal life along the shore. And I'm for it. It's great for baby Christians. That was a revival for baby Christians. But Azusa Street was a revival for people who were spiritually mature, and they had signs and wonders and miracles and manifestations of God's glory. They were in the deep end of the ocean out there, and that's where we want to go deep. Is calling glory. Amen. Deep. Hallelujah. God is calling you away from the shore. There's a Jamaican song, the water is moving, my friend, step right in. God's moving by his power. Again, listen to this. No longer stay on dry land. The water is moving, my friend. Come right in. Hallelujah. Amen. Step in. Step in. Go a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> until you're over your head. Paul said, death is swallowed up in life. I, I'm trying to think of the translator. I think it was E.B. Rue said, I'm drowned in a sea of life. You see, you're like a fish swimming in the water. And you need to plunge in. And that's your environment. That's where you live. That's where you're meant to be. A fish out of water can't live very long. It struggles, it gasps, it's weak, and it eventually right. withers and dies. A fish needs to be in the water, and you need to be in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Breathing, speaking, smelling, touching, feeling, moving in the Holy Ghost. I'm getting ready to lay hands on myself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let me see if I can get through this. I haven't even gotten to the good part yet. Let me see what I can skip. Praise God. Can't skip this. Yeah, I can. I'll skip that. I'll say this, and I'm I'm going to conclude here. Speaking in tongues is a rhema language. It's a rhema language. I've never heard that before. That's a direct revelation of the Holy Spirit. But you know the word rhema, you've heard it before. Uh, I had something to do with the creating of the Rhema Bible Training Center. I had something to do with that. I, well, I worked for Kenneth Hagin, and we were planning this school, and I, being the art director, had to had to work up all the brochures and all the pamphlets and all the uh, documents and everything, the whole the whole thing to support that school, uh, to advertise it and to sign people up and everything. And uh, then they paid me to go to school. Kenneth Hagin paid me to go to school, and uh, I ran the TV cameras there. That was part of my tuition was to run the TV cameras and take pictures and things like that. So I was a charter member of Rama Bible Training Center. And you've heard the word Rama. Rama and Logos are two words that uh, are quite different. They both can be translated word or speaking, but you have to go back to the Greek. And Logos is the written word of God the Bible, if you will. It's the Bible, Logos. And when we quote a scripture, we're quoting the Logos. But when we're prophesying or speaking by the Spirit or preaching under the inspiration of the Spirit, it becomes rhema. And rhema is defined as not the spoken word, but the speaking word, the active speaking forth word the inspired word that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. When you're speaking in tongues, you're not speaking logos. You can do that by reading the scriptures and the promises and singing those scriptures, logos. But when you start speaking in tongues and worshiping in the Spirit, it becomes rhema. Hallelujah. Praying in tongues is a rhema language. Hallelujah. And when you start 
praying the rhema language, you will start getting rhema words and rhema prophecies and rhema visions and rhema dreams, hallelujah, and rhema miracles. Things will start to come to you. Take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. Stretch forth your hand and be healed. No man eats fruit of thee henceforth and forever. So many people are trying to do that by the logos. Let me tell you something. Jesus didn't heal all the all the blind people. He healed the ones the Holy Spirit led him to. He did not cleanse all the lepers. He cleansed the one the Holy Spirit led him to. I have been involved in raising the dead, but there are a lot of dead people. I just let them stay dead. And unless I get a rain of word of God, I'm not going to try to raise anybody. Maybe you're supposed to be dead. I'm not going to interfere with the plan of God. So a lot of people think, well, I can just make this happen. I can just make that happen because I'm a word person. Honey, it's the spirit. Spirit in the word. Yes. And when that word becomes a rhema and it jumps off the page and it comes out of your mouth prophetically, yes. then things happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Praying in tongues is the gateway to the spirit. If you'll stick with me at Z Church, you're going to learn some things. You're going to grow. If you're not interested in growing, well, you can watch anyway. Maybe, maybe I'll say something funny to entertain you. Or you can look at my pretty wife and, and think about how good she looks. Amen. But we're here not to be Amen. seen and not to just hear ourselves talk. We're here to build you up and activate you in the flow of the Holy Ghost. Now, here's one, one of the reasons I'm passionate about this. I believe the next revival is going to be online. I believe that we have this great tool, this great network called the, the World Wide Web. Yes. And now we're in Web 5 or whatever, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. Satellites all around the globe that reach all of the continents. You know what that's for? Uh, Do you know what it's for? Is it nations. So can sell you ads? No. Or merchandise? Do you know what it's for? No, so that you can go on a dating site? And date 20 losers. <laughs> I'm just let that one sink in. Or is it to preach the gospel? Preach the gospel. We should there be you using go. it. These other things are going to keep happening, but listen, we're going to carve out our niche. Yeah. In the world wide web. Praise oh, God. Praise God. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Um because nobody understands him. We don't speak human to human in tongues. If we do that, it must be interpreted because it's not a mental language. It's not a cerebral language. Spoken language comes from a part of the brain called the boca area. And when we speak or listen or read, that boca area is the area that's activated. When we're speaking with tongues, there's, and this has been proven scientifically, there's very little activity in the boca area. Tongues don't come from the brain. They come from the spirit, out of our spirit. We speak by the spirit as the spirit gives us utterance. That's why the Bible says, this is the rest wherein you shall cause the weary to rest. As we're speaking in tongues, our brain gets a break. People take uh, medication and they try to sedate themselves to get a break, but praying in tongues will do more for us. Right. Praise God. Now, I'm not against medication and all that stuff. Amen. Praise Praise God. God. What I'm saying is, is that there's something else available. We're not limited to that. Or there's something else. I know one lady that was going nuts and driving her husband nuts. It turns out, I mean, she did this for years. It was horrible. They were on the point of divorce. And uh, finally, he husband put his foot down. He said, if you don't go to the doctor, I'm leaving. I can't live like this. And so in desperation, she went to the doctor. They tested her. Zero estrogen, zero progesterone. They started giving her hormone treatments. She changed overnight, loving sweet, her own self. And she said, okay, now I can function. She started believing God, confessing the word, and praying in the spirit. And one year later, she was totally off the medication. Her body was producing normal levels of hormones. So you see, sometimes we have to take the med, but with the objective, we're going to keep seeking God until we have that thing that we've been looking for, which is our, our healing. All right, let's go back to this, the Boca region. 
The Bible says that we speak in new tongues, not old tongues. Hebrew is an old tongue. Aramaic is an old tongue. Greek is an old tongue. Spanish is an old tongue. English is an old tongue. A new tongue is a tongue we've never spoken in before. And it's not, it doesn't really qualify as a language. It is speech. And we do communicate to God, but it has no vocabulary, no syntax, no, uh, no, uh, no grammar, thank God. And we need to celebrate the fact that it doesn't have rules. It doesn't have grammatical rules or vocabulary. Now then, are we okay here on this? Okay. New tongues, other tongues. The Bible, some people say, well, I speak with tongues. Well, the correct term is divers tongues, which means varieties of tongues. Now, back in Isaiah 28, it's, the prophet said, with men of stammering lips and other tongues shall I speak unto these people. Stammering lips and other tongues, yet they will not hear me. And speaking in tongues often, not always, but often begins with a stammering lip. Just a, a, it's exactly what you think it is, a stuttering. I know people who've done that for 20 years. They started praying in tongues and it was a stammering. Nothing wrong with that. I've done it. I do it to this day. Stammering lips are part of the package deal, but there's something beyond stammering lips, a higher expression called diversities of tongues or varieties of tongues. The Bible talks about tongues of men and angels. I mean, there are sounds that don't even sound organic sometimes. <laughs> there are sounds that sound, I mean, you can't even compare them to birds chirping or frogs croaking or donkeys braying or anything. There's so many sounds. Human beings have the ability to produce over a million different sounds. And a lot of times people are only producing one or two or three sounds when they're praying in tongues. You see, that's limited. There are a lot more sounds that you can incorporate. And as you pray these different varieties, it causes a variety of things to happen in you. If we just keep praying the same thing over and over and over and get stuck, it's good, but it's not good enough. That's why the Bible says varieties of tongues. Hallelujah. Lots of tongues. Now, right here, people would say, and this is my final close, they would say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let any words come out of my mouth that I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, give me that watch of call it over there, that thing of a doojiggy over there, that doodaddy. <laughs> what was that? It was a nonsense word. Those are called neologisms. <laughs> and there are a lot of neologisms. We say things that have no meaning. And these people that are resisting tongues because they might say something they don't know, they're just like all the rest of us. They're saying things that are nonsense. A neologism is a nonsense word. But it's a beautiful thing. Babies don't come into the world with a vocabulary. They come into the world making nonsense words. We call it baby talk. They coo and they make little noises and, and try things. You know, goo, 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 ba, ba, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then even sweethearts talk to one another. We never did baby talk, but I know people that do. I've seen it in the movies. Baby talk. That. And you know, baby talk is so beautiful. Goo goo da da wa wa ba ba way way. And and uh, kids just they try things. They're they're experimenting with their vocal cords and sounds. And you know, a child can speak any language on earth. Yeah. If they're born into a family that speaks one or two or more languages, they will be absolutely proficient at that language. Yeah. So they're trying yeah. things, and we think it's beautiful. Right? When a baby is going goo, 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 ba, 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 ba. Oh, listen to that. He just said, my father is so wonderful. <laughs> and, you know, that's sweet. But when it becomes a teenager, it, it gets kind of strange, doesn't it? <laughs> when it gets to be a 30-year-old, a 50-year-old, goo, goo, ga, ga. 
What, what if what if you uh, you know went to apply for a job and they ask you what your specialty was and you said goo goo gaga goo goo gee gee gaga? I don't think you get the job. No, <laughs> we mature even in tongues. There's a maturation process in tongues. People say I wouldn't I wouldn't speak in a language I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, zippity doo da zippity day. <laughs> <laughs> dip to dip to dip, bop to bop to bop, ring a ding ding, boo boo. <laughs> we do these things all the time. Musically, it's called scat singing or yeah. doo wop, and it's nonsense, but it's beautiful and it's important. Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, Sarah Vaughan, man, God. they didn't just sing words, they became an instrument. God wants you to be an instrument. I want to challenge you, and this is where I close, to allow yourself to experiment a little. Mm. Roy Hicks, a brilliant man. When I first heard this, I, I had a little pause. I thought, oh, I don't know, because uh, I got filled with the Holy Ghost in, a, in an old-fashioned Pentecostal church. We had a lot of traditions. And Roy Hicks would lead people into the spirit, get them their prayer language. And then he'd say, okay, let's Pray the alphabet. Now let's pray B. Babo bo si, babo be di bo bo si, kata ta, kaka ka la ka, di 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 oh my da. And I listened to that and I thought, I'm not so sure I want to do that. And then I started seeing the results. He got people unstuck, and he did it quick before they got stuck. As soon as they got filled with the Holy Ghost, he had them praying every vowel and every consonant sound and singing, praise the Lord. Well, uh, my timer's blinking there. I want to stop right here. The message that I have for you today is the gateway to spiritual gifts, the manifestation of the spiritual gifts, to flowing in the Spirit, is speaking in diverse tongues. The more variety you have in your tongues, the different kinds of manifestations you'll witness. They're connected. So you don't always have to pray the same tone or the same pitch or the same volume or the same rhythm. Mix it up. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you here and lead you there and lead you up and lead you down. Sometimes I find myself <laughs> I just goes all over the map. Goes all over the map. And I have to tell you the truth, every now and then I get stuck someplace. Occasionally I get stuck, and it's always with some Asian sounding thing. It's not Asian, it's not Chinese or Japanese, but I get stuck. And you know what I found out? If I'll just let the Holy Spirit use me, if I'll just yield, stop thinking about what it sounds like, and enjoy the experience, then it changes me. Yes. And each time I'm a little bigger. I want you in your private devotion, to go some places you've never been in the Spirit, to sing some songs you've never sung, and to pray out some diverse tongues you've never prayed, things that you've never heard come out of your mouth. Praise God. Try it. Yes. Pastor Loretta, come up here, please. Yes, yes. What do you think? Praise God. I tell you, what a blessing. And what a blessing. And, you know... It's, it really stirred up because, as you know, I'm writing a book about uh, um, praying in tongues. Praying in tongues, and a lot of people they get hung up on the fact that well, it's not a language. Well, it's not a language you know, but it's a language to God because it says He and you said that, Pastor. You said He that prays in the Spirit talks to God. So. You know, it's a special language. You know, a lot of people have what they call pig Latin or mm -hmm. something like that. It's, the, you know, it's not a real language that you get taught, but people can make up a language and then say, now this is it. 
you know, they now are teaching Klingon or whatever you call it. I didn't get a degree in Klingon. In Klingon, the uh, only place that that can happen is in California. No. <laughs> I'm a Californian. <laughs> you know what, Casca Loretta, I've seen this. You know, I've been in Pentecost a long time. I can pretty well guess what decade people receive their prayer language because it, it, from revival to revival and decade to decade, they had a different kind of prayer language right. and it depended on who they were surrounded by. Mm -hmm. And some of them were the, what I call the DDI die people, DDI, DDI, DDI. Well, the God got your attention with that. So, well, God got your attention on the DDI. <laughs> he did. Have too many dyes in it. <laughs> well, right. here's the thing about it I want to say is that what we are trying to convey to you today, what Pastor minister to you today is that there are higher heights yeah, and deeper depths. And deeper depths. You know, I, listen, listen to me carefully. And Pastor said it in his ministry. You can pray, you can be filled with the Spirit, or at least have the Holy Spirit and be saved and go to glory without ever speaking in tongues. So don't think that we're not saying that. You you can do that. You know, it's just you can. But if you want to go into that level, like as you talked about with Azusa Street and oh God. Uh, I want or the day of Pentecost, whatever it is where you would go into a level, what you preached about last week, mm -hmm. you said the inner uh, the outer court, remember, Pastor, mm -hmm. and in the inner court and then into the Holy of Holies. We want to get to the Holy of Holies. We want to get there where we get our directives straight from God. Isn't it? Unmute yourselves. Um, dear Z Church, I mean, just, you know what, raise your hands and give God glory praise for Lord, this. Hallelujah. And let us just for a moment praise begin to Lord, worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. has a message in tongues. Praise, Praise God. God. I have a, 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 a we're gonna you're gonna see tongues and revelation and uh interpretation here. And I have a word here now. Here it is. And Pastor talked about this last mm -hmm. week. Here it goes. Oh, praise God. Je bando rosta, je bede bato rande, je je endo rosa. The stream begins small. It's something that you can jump over, but it gets wider and deeper. It becomes a river in which you can swim. It gets wider and deeper as it goes further. Keep going. Yes, 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 yes. Keep praying in the, just quietly yeah. praying in the Holy Spirit here because God is really speaking to uh, speaking to us. Ze paso, ze paso, ze paso. It no ah si, ze paso, ze paso. So follow that stream wherever it goes. If it's shallow, if it's deep, if it winds, if there are rapids, if it's still, go where the Holy Spirit wills. Oh, wow. Keep going. Praise more. God. Yeah, there is more, Pastor. There is more. Yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, hey, ha, ha, ho, ho, saba, go ring in bande, bado, rosa, ha, ha, ho, ho, hey, hey, ejato. It is a, a river of blessings. It is a river of joy. And you will laugh as you merrily go forth. In this river, there is no worry. There is no stress. There is no strain. It's peaceful and joyous in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. Praise God. Give That's the Lord right. a hand clap. Praise That's God. It. We want to be in My the river. God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And I Hallelujah. desire for that river to flow through Z. I'm telling you, amazing Z team, you 
started something before the service during our pre-service prayer. It's kept going. I've sensed it. I want us to have an online revival, and this is how it's going to happen, praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are a lot more things that will happen, but praying in tongues is a prerequisite, and we need to continue to do it. And that flow is going to go into people's hearts and people's homes. It's going to go across the sea. It's going to go into places where you and I can't go, but it's going to flow. And it's going to be a river of miracles, a river of healing, a river of blessings, a river of revelation, a river of impartation, a river that manifests as gifts, and it gives people a lift. That's what we want. We want, and we're contending for, and I believe we shall have an online revival. Praise God. The presence of God is just strong. Lift your hands. Praise oh, God. Son. Thank oh, you, son. Jesus. Hallelujah. Just wish I sense it just tr- 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 coming on us right now. Like a rain. Receive, Hallelujah. receive the blessing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, Java, Hallelujah. Pastor, there's more. Go ahead. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, there's there's a lot more. There's a lot more. But if you'll notice, this is a continuation of last week. And we're going to go further with this. When I have opportunity, I'm going to go further. I'm going to go deeper, give you the tools and the knowledge to be able to go further. Sometimes others can help us. I've been helped by great people. One of my heroes was John G. Lake. I didn't know him, but he definitely influenced me. I didn't know Smith Wickersworth, but he influenced me. I did know Lester Sumrall, and he was a he was a protege of Smith Wickersworth. And uh, thank God for forerunners and people who can help us. And everything I've learned and done, uh, I want to share with you. I don't know everything, but what I do know, I want to share. And I believe is if I share what I have, I'll get more. That's the way it works. So, Father, we thank you for our future at Z Church. And I believe it's great. We're a small group, but they were a small group on the day of Pentecost. And it went worldwide. Azusa Street was a small group, a handful of people. But it went worldwide. And you do great things from small beginnings. And so I thank you. We, we, We are contending for a Holy Ghost revival, and our Z team are going to grow. They're already mature. I've had people tell me there's so many mature people on Z team. They all seem so mature. They are mature. And yet we're still growing, and we're going to grow together and flow together. And God's going to draw people. The Bible says no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw them. So we're not going to frustrate God by just trying to do it ourselves in the flesh. We're going to do it by the Spirit. A lot of Christians today are trying to uh, to accomplish the Bible through legislation and politics. And not going to work. It doesn't work. That's the job of the Holy Spirit to change people's hearts, not, not politics. You can't legislate a heart change. No, you can't. And, and we need to go back and, and to Pentecost. That was the thing that changed the world. Yes. Praise God. All right, I'm I'm gonna stop here. Okay, Pastor, uh, Pastor, what how do you want the direction of the service? Do you want to right now have prayer or do you want to do the communion? Um, um I'm gonna let you do the prayer. I'm gonna take a little rest. Okay. I'll come back for communion. We'll bring up um okay, our then, church here, our house church. And then a house church, and then we'll have our offering. And then the offering. Yeah. Okay. Stay with us because uh Great things are happening. We're going to have live prayer. You have time to get your prayer request in. Just give us a request on chat, and we'll pray live on air. And then we're going to have a live communion, and then we're going to have our tithes and offerings. Very important, participate with the tithes and offering. And then we're going to make a few announcements and go straight into our afterglow. And that'd be a good place if you have questions or a testimony, share that with us in the afterglow. Okay. Hey, Pastor, uh, do you mind putting this on the gallery view so I can see? Um, Terry? Um, uh, yes. Do we have prayer requests? Yes, we do. Uh, first one would be from 
I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Marisabel Villanueva for her family. Would you say it again? Marisabel Villanueva for her family, uh, her health, finances, and work, and the will of God done for her and her family. Okay, okay. Praise God. I'm going to ask Javier to pray. Would you do that, Javier? Yes. Yes. Heavenly Father. You know, Maria Isabel is your beloved child. She's been following for since she was so young. Uh, please guide her with your Holy Ghost. Open her eyes, her ears, and lead her to where she must go. And bless uh, her family, both uh, his son and his, uh, her daughter. So bless them and guide them too, so they can seek you and look for your continuous presence in their life and not be resentful with anything. Take away any bitterness in their lives. Uh, clean them so that you can uh, use them and you can bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for amen. my cousin Mano Manuel. I pray for my cousin Maria Alejandra. I pray for my aunt Maria Isabel, that your Holy Spirit is upon them with healing, with peace, with grace, with joy, with provision, and open doors that only you can open. And Loretta, I also want to pray for my cousin Cesar Andres Sotillo. He is very dear to me. He is going through a very uh, rough season, and I ask you to join me with he, for him. Yes. He lost his sister uh, a year ago, and it's very difficult. Lord. I pray for Cesar Andres. We pray that you give him the Holy Spirit kind of peace, the Holy Spirit kind of reconciliation with uh, the people around him, with grace in his life in every detail. I pray in, for his relationship with his beautiful fiance, Natalie. I pray that you bless them with your love, with your favor in all things, that they might come to know the love of God that exceeds all knowledge that is wider and deeper and greater than anything. And they might know that with you, all things are possible in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Let's amen. Say amen. amen. Praise God. We, and let's just amen. give glory to God for Thank the you. prayer that uh, Javier amen. prayed over. The uh, What is it? Uh, Nuevo. Nuevo and for what Mar um, and Marianne prayed. We give God glory. Yes. We don't just amen. pray just so to be doing something. We pray and we expect. Yes, you know, there's a difference between wishing and and hoping. What we do, we are in hope. The difference is that wishing you want something to happen, but you don't really think it might. Not you expected. want it strongly, but you're not really sure it's going to happen. Hope is I want it and I expect it. You see the difference? Amen. I want it and I expect it. Hope is expecting, wishing is wanting. We expect God yes. to answer. Uh, Terry, is there another Amen. prayer request? That's great. Yes, we have a couple more. Paul Kings is asking to receive his visa to America before the end of the year. I'm going to ask Pastor to come up here and pray for that. He jumped at that. <laughs> I was, You're just on, darn it. I was, I was already coming up out of my chair when... Uh, when that prayer request came through, we had, we went through this in Mexico and we finally got a miracle. Praise God. Praise God. And we're doing it again here. And the Bible says, pray for one another that he might be healed. So I'm going to do this because we need a blessing too. Father, yes. I yes. thank you for granting this visa. We are citizens of heaven. We're ambassadors with Jesus and we have diplomatic immunity. And diplomats can go anywhere they want to go with impunity. And I thank you that you open doors that no one closes and you close doors that no one can open. And I thank you for blessing my brother with his visa this, this year. year. And we all amen. say amen. 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 And when you say amen, you're saying so be it. Amen. And so we are there. So we rejoice, God, that you have answered yes. our prayer. We amen. rejoice and we thank you. Amen. Terry? Amen. Praise God. Amen. The last one here is for Tracy Eddings, and she is asking for a supernatural promotion in her career. 
Okay, Christina, would you pray? I mean, Christine, excuse me, would you pray and pray for me for, for forgiveness? <laughs> You're Christine. fine. Praise you, Father. Lord, I just thank you that you are moving powerfully on Tracy's behalf, that you go before her, opening doors, clearing passages, making a way where there is no way. You, Father, lead, guide, and direct her and give her all the information that she has need of to be able to have the right promotion in the right way at the right time for the right reason. And we thank you, Lord, for Holy Ghost guidance in her life and the power of your spirit over her and protecting her from anything that Satan would try to do to steal, kill, or destroy yes, anything right. about this in Jesus' That's, name. Absolutely. Thank you, Lord. That's Clear direction absolutely. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you so much. Let's worship God Amen. for the answered Amen. prayer. Answered prayer. Amen. Uh, Mother Gracia has a need. of have asked Marianne to pray for her. Okay. Um, come, come. Mm -hmm. I also pray for Maria Gracia, my cousin. She's looking for a better job, for new opportunities and open doors. Lord, I pray for Maria Gracia. You love her. She's your daughter, the apple of your eye, the delight in your heart. And you love her so much that she's here and she receives your blessings and favor in this search for a new job. That you open the right door at the right time in the ideal opportunity in which she can grow as a professional and be where she needs to be to not have just a position, but an influence. And for everyone right now listening that is looking for a job, yeah. I pray for yeah. you in Jesus name. God has a door that no man can shut. God has an opportunity that no one can take away. We don't receive favor from men. We receive it from God. He is the one that opens every chance for us. And his promises are all yes amen. and amen in Jesus Christ. So receive that for your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So amen. Praise God. Let's worship God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise Thank God. God. Thank you, Father. It's a Praise lovely God. heart, Thank beautiful you, family. There are two more things that I want to do before. Are there any more prayer requests, Terry? That's all for today. Okay, then I have two. So, sorry, can I have copy? Yes, of course. Now I have three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I want if we could pray for your health, especially for hypertension okay. to leave your body, because okay. that's not the place where it should be. You are a child of God. Thank, Thank you. you. Please do. Go ahead, Javier. Heavenly Father, you. by your stripes, we were healed. And you love Loretta. You love her so, so much. So with your holy ghost, we ask for her help so that hypertension can leave her body. Her pressure will go down so it is normal. In Jesus' name, amen. I receive that. I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I just thank you for your healing on my body. And I'm going to say that anyone is dealing... With any kind of blood pressure or hypertension, heart trouble, whatever, the prayer that Javier just prayed, you take that prayer and say, God, you thank you for healing me because God is a healer and he's no respective person. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here's the deal, what that means. If God ever healed anyone, then he has to heal you. That's just the way it is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm telling you, Pastor, you really have just, as you said, it started with our pre-prayer, with our praise and worship. There are two things that I want to do. I want, I'm going to ask. I see the uh, the Ryan family here, and I want uh, Elder Bob to pray again over them. And then I want Pastor Sharon to lead um, the salvation prayer. Will you both do that for me, please, uh, Elder Bob? All right. Well, Lord, we we again give you thanks for the Ryan family. And most importantly, I'm reminded right now, the Ryan family are your servants. They have surrendered to you, Lord Jesus. You are their Lord. They are your servants to command. And we just pray that you command and direct your servants to your calling, mission, assignment, and purpose for their lives, their house, and their family, because that's where their fruitfulness is. That's where their productivity is. That's where their prosperity is. 
That's where their protection is. That's where they will bear fruit for your kingdom, and that fruit will remain and 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 be in their account in your kingdom. And that's what we want for them, for their promotion in, in you and in your kingdom by fulfilling the purpose you have for them. We pray your spirit leads them, guides them, directs them in it, and reminds them to pray in tongues as we heard to do today, yes, because yes. that's where they will be praying out their future, their kingdom uh-huh. mission and calling and power in Jesus' name. So be it. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. 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 Family, we love you. And we're just so happy that you are here with us and we just hope to see you more and more and we just speak blessings over you. Thank you so much. Pastor Sharon, would you lead uh, the salvation prayer? And uh, if you have to turn your mic up, go right ahead. Uh, Thank you, Pastor Loretta. Um, Today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. If The Holy Ghost is moving right now. So I just thank you, Lord, that you're drawing people as we say together, Lord, I come to you. Can uh, that, can you say that with me, Z team? Okay. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I come, Lord, to, I come, I come to, to you. I believe and receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I receive and receive Jesus, Jesus as my Lord, Lord, and, Lord and, Savior. and Savior. Right now, by faith. Right now, by, by, right by, now, by faith. faith. He lives in my heart. He lives in my, in my heart. heart. I thank you, Lord, that you're here within me. I, I thank, thank you, Lord, Lord that you're you here, here with, me. with me. I give my life to you. I give, I my, give life my life to you. you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Sharon Amen. gives them the instructions. If they have received, what are they to do, Pastor Sharon? If they receive, or how to contact us and let us know. Yes. Please let us know. Contact us with at info at zchurch.life. Let us know. We've got information for you and we can help you grow. Amen. Amen. You know, when you said that last prayer about salvation and I give myself, I was thinking of the song that uh, Joseph was of God. Here I am. I give all of me away. That's what we want. Well, you know what? I tell you, I just, I, my goosebumps have goosebumps on top of goosebumps. It's just wonderful praise and worship. And we're going to let this continue into the afterglow. But right now we're going to have communion. Please tell me who's responsible for leading us in communion. Chris, praise God. Go ahead, Chris, please. I'm sure everybody's familiar with uh, Acts Acts chapter 10, um, where Peter went up on the rooftop at six o'clock in the morning and fell into a trance. And um, uh, he saw all manner of uh, wild beasts, creeping things and things like that. And God told him to eat, eat these things. And he said, I won't touch anything that's unclean. And then God reprimanded him and said, what God has cleansed, call not thou uncommon. Right. Um, Peter said he 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 wasn't going to eat anything common. And he said, God, I, I don't don't call it what I made it uncommon. Don't call it common. And that's holiness. Holiness is uh, being uncommon, and that's what God has made us through His um, through uh, through the offering of Jesus. And then there's Hebrews chapter ten, verse fourteen: For by one offering He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And I think that's an interesting use of the present or uh, the past perfect along with the present continuous. We are being continually sanctified, but He has forever perfected us, so we are holy. We, we may not feel like it at times, but we are holy because he has made us holy. Um, so let's, let's uh, take our bread. Uh, the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood 
Good job. It's good to have another man's voice here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chris. That was just powerful. Excellent, Chris. And, and Pastor, you want to go ahead now? Um, I want you to prepare your heart to give an offering to the Lord. Um, it says in the Bible that, that uh, we reap what we sow. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. This is an immutable principle. It always works. It's the principle of seed time and harvest. And Jesus taught that harvest comes from planting seed. And now is the time for you to plant your seed expecting a harvest. J.B. Phillips' translation says, a man's harvest in life depends entirely upon what he sows. Here's how this works. If we sow occasionally, we reap occasionally. If we sow intermittently, then we reap intermittently. Wouldn't you like to have a harvest every week? Wouldn't you like to have a continuous harvest? Well, that takes continuity in your giving. You need to be a continuous giver at every opportunity. If we give little, we receive little. If we give much, we receive much. If we give something of value, we receive something of even greater value back. It all depends upon the seed. Let me talk to you directly. You are enjoying right now the harvest that you sowed for yesterday. And you say, well, it's not much. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> you see, a big harvest comes from sowing uh, something that's significant, something that means something to you. If it means something to you, it means something to God. If it's valuable to you, it's valuable to God. We need to sow liberally and not grudgingly because God loves a liberal giver whose heart is in his giving. I'm going to pray for you to have a great harvest of blessings. And I would like for you to have continuous blessings, continuous harvest this week, next week, the next week. So don't sow and wait and wait and wait and then get a harvest. Sow and sow and sow and eventually the sowing will over the reapers will overtake the sowers. You'll have it'll be coming to you in every way. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for giving us an understanding of the divine seed time and harvest principle. There is no harvest without the planting of a seed. If we sow friendship, we get friendship. If we sow money, we get money. Every seed brings forth after its own kind. Now, give everyone here their personal instructions. We who are tithers, we know what to do with our tithe. We know how much it is, and we know what to do with it. But those of us who are giving over and above our tithe a special offering, we'd like to be led of the Holy Spirit. So just give us peace, and may we be found following the Holy Spirit from the heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, there's some instructions on your screen about how to give. You can go to the website, zchurch.life forward slash give, and do it right now. We're going to play a little video, and you take this time to plant your seed. Do it now. The quicker you plant it, the sooner you get a return on your sow on your sowing. Praise God.
Praise God. I have a few announcements here before the Afterglow begins. We invite you to visit our website, zchurch.life. You're going to find media there, all our past services, and the Z Church blog. There's new articles every week. You really want to go check that out. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll also find the Zoom links for our Zoe group meetings. If you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team, you can email info at zchurch.life. There are many opportunities available, and there is a place for you. We also encourage you to watch Pastor Larry's Good Life Devotion clips on Facebook weekdays at 7 a.m on the Z Church page, and you can find his In Him Minutes on TikTok now at Z Church Life. Uh, You're invited to our Holy Ghost Miracle Service on Saturday, April 29th, 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Save that date. It's a dedicated service for you to receive God's miracle power into your life. And you can email prayer requests for that to info at zchurch.life. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is Christine. If you would like to observe only, uh, please stop your video and mute your microphone. If you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know, and they'll bring your question into the discussion. We'd also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. And now, right before the afterglow, we have a special video from Terry. Hi, let me tell you something I really appreciate about Z Church, and that is Divine Connections. Although our pastors are miles apart from us, they are present with us in the spirit. They pray for us, and I can feel it. And they are like a father and mother in the faith, and it's such a blessing. Divine connections, what do I mean by that? Perhaps this quote that Sharon sent me um, will explain it better. This is from Clint Byers. Jesus said his words are spirit and life, and his words are not just ideas. They are genetically encoded seeds to become specific blessings, gifts, and fruit. And that's what's happening. It's a divine tapestry. And if you are involved in Z Church or you want to become involved in Z Church, I guarantee this will happen for you. My husband and I like to ride e-bikes. When we got those e-bikes, you know, there's a reason that that box says some assembly required. You're not just a piece sitting out there, not quite fitting, not knowing where to fit, but you'll be placed in the right spot by the Holy Spirit, the direction of the Holy Spirit through our pastors. And I just want you to know, it's great having divine connections. Zchurch.life That was a good video. That was a great video. Thank you, Terry, and thank you, Bob. Thank you. Announcements are... No. Afterglow. We'll just go ahead into the afterglow. I didn't know Sharon was finished either. Anyway, <laughs> let's just welcome our great big first home group here. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so who has something they'd like to jump up and say first about your experience receiving tongues or something that happened to you concerning that? In your life, somebody have something you'd like to share? Javier, go ahead. You're muted. Oh, it's a, oh, it's such a blessing to be a family. This is really a family, a Sita Church. And to see my family visiting our pastors, which are also like the family, it's so, so, so great. It's really a blessing for me. I was saying it was Peter Sweet because I miss my wife, but I'm so happy for oh. her and for my sons and daughters so that they can interact with our dear pastors, Larry and Loretta, and that she can see her child. Oh, such a blessing. That's all. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, Joseph, you have your hand up. 
Um, I just have two things. Uh, when Pastor Loretta was speaking in tongues, the last message, I just had a vision of uh, the stream that uh, Pastor Larry was describing, and then it that it opened up to Last Laugh Lake. That's wow. that's the thing that I just saw, Last Laugh Lake. Because <laughs> okay, when, that's, yeah, that's that's what I saw. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is when I was um, learning my prayer language, I actually did what Pastor Larry said. I went through the whole alphabet. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I guess, that's just my like ICU nurse brain. I like systematically went through every vowel and every syllable I could think because of. Because you're clinical. Yeah. Yeah. And then that helped. That really helped open up things. And then the last thing was sometimes I feel like when I get stuck um, in my prayer language, you know, when you're washing a pan or a pot and there's like a little thing that you got to scrub with the, with the, uh, you know, with the whatever the thing, like the rough Gallery. scrub thing, you know, like sometimes I feel like, yeah, I'm stuck, but maybe I need to be stuck like right here and just keep on. And then what? I just snap out of it and I go on to something else. So that's just, that's just my thoughts. That's good. I see Beverly there. Beverly's with us. Beverly. Hi, Beverly. I don't see her, but if she'd like to speak up, go ahead, Beverly. Well, the Ryan family looks like uh, they wanted to say something. I uh, think Terry had her hand her up. Her microphone is not hooked up, so. Terry, you want to go ahead? You've got your hand up. The uh, Ryan family can, sure, be welcome yeah. first. I didn't see your hand. We're going to go with what Christine said. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, while we were praying for those people, there were some that asked for promotion, and I just wanted to to encourage them that promotion doesn't come from the East or West, according to Psalm 75, but it comes from God and Amen. expect favor because he loves to give it. That's yeah. it. Man. <laughs> you know, uh, we've got a little echo and I'm sorry, but sometimes the logos becomes a rhema and that's what just happened. That was yeah. more than just a word. Mm -hmm. That was a now word. Yeah. Yep. So now we're thank you. Thank you, Terry. Were we going with the Ryan family? Did you want to talk? Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just was struck by when Pastor uh Larry was talking about saying what God said. And how powerful that is. And I remember him saying, telling us a story one time about a gentleman that was in his church who died and, and Larry spoke over him. And mm -hmm. it was because that Larry heard the word from the Lord. The other guys were praying over him, other pastors, other people in the church. But the man remembered what Larry said because Larry had gotten that word from the Lord. True. Yes. Just thought that that was just such a powerful demonstration of having a word. When we say what Jesus says, when Jesus says something and we say it and agree with them, it it just changes everything. It just it, when Jesus was out on the water and he said, "Come," Peter got out of the boat and on the strength of that word, "Come," he yeah. walked in the water. Amen. And it always kind of bothers me that Peter gets a bad rap because I don't think any of the others. Came, right. but, he, but Peter got out and he started walking on the water on that word. And I and I and I just keep thinking about how Larry talked about when God gives you a word, He says, "Come or go, or speak, or touch that person, lay hands on them, or pray." We do it. That's when all heaven moves and 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 miracles happen. Mm -hmm. So when we are motivated by that word from the Lord, and, and I just think that's just such a powerful dynamic in ministry and life, and, and we that we move, we're quick to go when we're told to go, quick to come when he says come, and so forth. And it's just such a beautiful thing. And oftentimes that comes about, that word comes about through <laughs> praying in tongues. You're praying in the spirit. You're, uh, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day in Revelation. Well, I believe he was praying in tongues like nobody's business. That's just me. <laughs> but I believe John on that island was praying in tongues. I was on the spirit 
on the Lord's day. Well, how do you get in the spirit? You pray in tongues. And then what happened? Jesus appeared. Thank you so much, Howard. Uh, Christine, I think you see several hands up. So after you get all of those hands, I'd like to say something. So my hand's up, but it's like I'm number three or something. Uh, I only see one other hand. I thought is... Maria had her hand up for a while. Oh, I see Louise, but that's the only one I see. And then you can go after Louise, okay? Okay. Go for it, Louise. Hey. The thing that I just realized is what happened to me is different than what I've seen in a lot of churches. I've seen a lot of, um, like in the Baptist church that I went to, or even Pentecostal churches that I went to, um, they would invite people to get saved. And the people would go up and get saved, and then they'd take them off into a room to uh, tell them about salvation or whatever. But what happened to me was I went to the PTL club with my Catholic church. I didn't know anything about baptism and I didn't know what being saved meant. Didn't know what that was. I hardly knew anything. <laughs> but somehow in the PTL club, Vicki Jamerson was so powerfully full of the Holy Ghost that I had a totally encounter with Jesus. And just thought, he's real. And I mean, I did. When she entered the room singing, I on the inside, is I felt something on my body. I didn't know it was the anointing. I didn't know what it was. I just said on the inside, God, you're really real. <laughs> and millions and millions of miles away in the sky. And, you know, I don't know. I just didn't know. And then during the meeting, a girl grabbed my hand, a little Mexican girl grabbed my hand, and she says, come on, that's rest. And I was crying because I got healed in my seat. Didn't know what happened to me, but I was crying. And I could breathe. I yelled out, I can breathe. And I was just very emotional. <laughs> didn't know what she said. Didn't have any clue what she said. Even if I heard it, I wouldn't have known what it meant. So the girl next to me knew that, and she grabbed my hand and said, come on, that's right. And I'm, I'm crying, saying, oh, where are we going? <laughs> we go up front, and I saw Jesus in Vicki Jameson's eyes. I, I didn't see nothing more. I, I went into some kind of space, and he healing me. And I could feel his hand on the inside cleaning me. I could hear furniture. I mean, it was just a dramatic thing. It was so real. So That's beautiful. It, it was, I could tell you more you know, when she said, forgive of sins. I saw a slip of my life go by because I said, sins, I'm not a sin. I don't have sins. <laughs> I thought I said that in my mind, in my, you know, in front of Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, oh, no, say you didn't. I, <laughs> my, my life went by me and I realized I was a sinner. And I was like, well, you know, <laughs> say anyway, I got saved. But the wonderful thing is nobody had time to preach any religion to me or to try to not convince me of anything because they immediately brought us downstairs and in the room we were all sitting on chairs and there were people going around to every person and they were I didn't know what was going on I didn't even understand I heard noise and had no clue because I was still emotional they got in front of me nobody touched me oh sorry <laughs> sorry they got in front of me and I started praying in tongue I started speaking in another language I don't know what they said or what they did but That's I started beautiful. speaking in tongues before I ever got baptized in water and then That's I read in, uh, uh, in the book of Acts that there was a place where people got baptized in the Holy Ghost and prayed in tongues before they ever got baptized in water Thank you so much, uh, Louise. That's just beautiful. I'm going to say something, and I apologize for the uh, echo. However, uh, what a beautiful experience that Louise shared with us. You know, we all have, it's wonderful how we can all experience Jesus so different and, and see Jesus. And you know the thing about it, Louise, uh, no one can take that from you. No one. Absolutely no one. That's your experience. 
I wanted to say something, and I think, uh, Christine, that I saw Terry's hand up, but maybe not. But, you know, talking about the Holy Ghost, I have to tell you, when Pastor Larry and I were newly married, now I came from the Church of God in Christ, so, you know, we prayed all night long. We had Terry service. We did that. We had to go to church on Sunday and get out on Tuesday night. You know, I mean, that's just <laughs> how long we had so much church and everything like that. But, and we prayed in the Holy Spirit, but I, I, my understanding of the Holy Spirit at that point was um, you had to get in a mood to pray in the Holy Spirit. If God was going to do something, you had to get into a mood. You know, the lights get low or something. I don't know. And so when I was newly married to uh, Pastor Larry, you know, one moment we're cracking, you know, laughing and having fun. And all of a sudden, boom, he's in the spirit. And that confused me. You know, it really did. Like, wait a second. Now, we were just telling some, excuse me, blonde jokes. <laughs> and Terry fell out. <laughs> and now all of a sudden you're walking in the spirit. I mean, and and it was undeniable. The Holy Ghost was there. I couldn't understand it. Well, then I heard it. Pastor shared this testimony last week, and I'm just about up on my three minutes. Yeah. Here, Pastor Larry shared this on last week called that Dr. Hagen. You remember that story about Dr. Hagen? How that uh, for, he prayed one hour and was dry two hours. The devil talked to him, was dry three hours. He's worse than the first two. The fourth hour was worse than all three mm -hmm. put together, but he kept going. And then all of a sudden, and so I was, in, I heard this testimony by uh, Anne Durant. I believe that's her name, Durant, and her husband. And she was saying, she says, but after that, he said he had a gusher. She said something that struck my, uh, captured my attention and made me understand Pastor. And that is, she said, because of that, he was able to go in and out, in and out. And, the, and Jesus says that. He says, you can go in and out. You know what? You can just be your normal self. But the, when the moment comes, you can step right into that level of the holy holies. And that comes from praying in the spirit. And Pastor Larry, that's what I want to share. I'm like 30 seconds over my time. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the clock ticking. <laughs> no problem. You're fine. Does anyone right else have else? something but you want to say? I just wanted to point that out, that that, I saw that because we could be one, uh, one we could be just talking and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit yeah. and you know the, the, the atmosphere had changed. Yeah. So it's about that big going in, going out, going in, going out. And thank you, Joseph, for that revelation, that vision you saw. Praise God. Yes, yes, okay. yes. I, I think I took someone's okay. whole minute. I'll pay you back some other way. <laughs> it's good, Nas Loretta. It's good. Christine? <laughs> yes. Uh, Beverly now has a microphone. She does. I don't see her hand up, but if she'd Hello. like to speak, go Hi, for it. Hi, Beverly. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How's everybody? Greetings from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, the message was very, very um, uh, informative, uh, educational, and it help tie some bows for me. Uh, sometimes when I pray in the Holy Spirit, I find myself um, going across other waters as um, Pastor um, Huggins was uh, explaining. Sometimes I find myself groaning in the Spirit, and sometimes I find myself laughing in the Spirit. Um, usually when I'm on the road, driving, going here to there, I'll be speaking in tongues, speaking in the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden a laughter will come on me. And sometimes a song will come on me. And the song sounds kind of, it's, it's a spiritual song. And it sounds, it sounds kind of silly, but a lot of times after I'm finished praying in the Holy Spirit, I, a song will come. And I remember one time I was praying with another sister in the Lord and she was like, I'm so tired of hearing those little songs that you be singing in the spirit. Oh, my goodness. I'm so tired of it. And I'm like, well, I can't help it. It just comes. It's not like I'm pretending. It just it's a song that comes after I stop speaking in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, 
The victory song. Amen. <laughs> that means you got breakthrough. Amen. Yes. All right. Someone else has something you want to share? I would like to share about what, what I usually share with my friends when they start to know for the first time about, about tongues. I, I always like to share with them when I receive my tongues. Um, I had the concerns that most people will have, like, what, what if I make it up? What if the, I make up something in the desire of, of what's real? And I say, you know, you know how I did it. I, I brought that to my pastor and he said, well, we'll pray against it and mm-hmm. then go in faith. Yeah. And I told the Lord, you know, you're God. You're all powerful. I do want you. And what is your legitimate real thing? You don't let me speak anything that is not your real thing. And I'm like, I'm going to trust you here. If I am able to say something, it's going to be from you because I'm giving this to you. I'm entrusting myself in that area. And then I move just freely trusting the Lord that that he will not just ignore my prayer and just let me fake it after I have mm. said that, right? Amen. So Man. don't deal. Yeah. Very good. Did I see your hand up, yeah. Chris, earlier? Chris. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just want to say I'm really grateful for uh, Z Church and the education you get here because I grew up, um, well, my family went, we went to a Presbyterian church for a long time where you could easily sleep through the sermons. Um, but my, my parents were really strict, so they didn't, they didn't let us sleep. Um, but but and then we went to a, a, a full gospel church, right, a Pentecostal church, and there you get saved and it's like you've arrived and there was no education beyond that and then you get filled with the holy ghost and you've arrived now you have your language but there was no education beyond that there was no education about how right. why uh, the baptism in the holy spirit is important how to continue praying in tongues how to believe god and there was no absolutely no talk about the devil whatsoever mm-hmm. or the accuser or the brethren there was no, absolutely no education about how to grow in Christ. Mm. And yeah. these word churches, they're hard to find. Mm. You know, they're, they're, really, they're really, really hard to find. So I'm really grateful for the education I get here. Um, you know, I've, I've got a, a long way to go, but I'm in the right place. And I really appreciate the, the teachings that I get here every week. And it's worth it waking up. <laughs> at one o'clock in the morning to yeah. to be wow. a part of this body so um that's that's what i i wanted to say praise god amen yes that reminds me when i received the holy spirit i was in a baptist church as a child and i just received it on my own but because there wasn't any teaching I didn't carry on with it, didn't know what to do with it, and forgot I even had it. And for 17 years, I didn't even remember that I'd had that experience. And it wasn't until I went to my first Spirit-filled church and heard teaching and found out what, oh, that's what you're supposed to do with that. That's when I remembered that I even received it as a child. And God had to take some time of working with me to get it free because it got all locked up in all that teaching of the Baptist church that said it was of the devil. So God had to free that for me. So yeah, you're right. Teaching is really important for what you get with what you got. Um, Yeah. I mean, what, what are these people doing in these (laughs) churches? I mean, what do they do? You know, and how, how do you come up with a sermon is, you know, on salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then don't move beyond that. How do you keep talking about the same thing over and over and over again and don't move beyond it? You know, it's like, it's amazing. I mean, that's like a, that's like a special gift. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else like to share something? Yeah. Just that uh, Larry always shares how uh, the Holy Spirit is the wind in our sails. And how are we supposed to go anywhere in our life as a believer if uh, we don't have wind and we are sailing? 
Amen. So, yeah, that's all I wanted Amen. to say. Preach it, Mary. <laughs> Listen, yeah. Christine, thank you. Uh, the Barcelona church is getting ready to go eat. <laughs> all right. Yes. So they're, we're getting something in the spirit that says they're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a blessing seeing you all together. <laughs> yeah, and amen. Uh, uh, well, it's enjoy. after three o'clock, so if no one has anything urgently they need to share, we can find someone to wrap us up in prayer. We love you all. We love you all. We love you guys. Great too. time. So cool. Enjoy your night. <laughs> Cal, can you, you close us out in prayer? Hello? Favor, safety, health, and prosperity. <laughs> And continue to keep the family in prayer because they will be traveling tomorrow. Okay. Why don't you right. quickly pray, uh, Christine, over them? Uh, they're getting ready to travel. Yes. Also, my fiance is getting ready to come back from U.S. We, we're just praying for no. <laughs> <laughs> Christine, when you pray for them, Father God, we you just pray for them. <laughs> We praise you, Lord God, for your hand of protection and safety upon them and for your peace, Lord God, that they can travel with absolute peace. No distractions, no hindrances, no obstacles, nothing hindering the flow of everything that they desire to do and need to do and needs to be taken care of. We thank you, Lord, for absolute protection over Errol, that you're bringing him home safely, Father God, that you're taking care of him and ministering to him by your yeah. spirit all day every day in jesus name that you're just going into him with a deeper anointing than he's ever known before and you're causing him to rise up as a powerful anointed man of god doing what you have for him to do and i thank you father god for blessings over that entire family in jesus holy holy name and thank you, Father, for that money's coming in in Jesus' name. Amen. I take that for myself. Amen. 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 We love you. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, Pedro Anthony from Nigeria, Pedro, needs help passing. He just put a, a chat on here. He, can you read it up, Pastor Loretta? Um, up above. Up above. I want God to take care of my life and help me pass forward. Oh, excuse me. I want God to take care of my life, help me pass my forthcoming exams, bless my family through me, and remove shame and suffering from my family. And I, I, and help me to follow God's way and add a good life worthy of emulation. His name is Pedro Anthony, uh, Nigeria. And also there's another one that's coming in. So we'll pray for him first. And then we have another one. Okay. Here's another one. And then, and then there's one from Beverly. So first, uh, 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 Terry. Yes. Would you pray for, um, would you pray for them? Pedro. Pedro. Father, we pray for Pedro Anthony from Nigeria. Help him pass his exams in the mighty name of Jesus with flying colors. We pray that you will bless his family. Uh, I know that this young man has seven. There are seven in his family. Um, remove shame and suffering. Jesus, we know that you bore all of that for us, so we don't have to have that. We speak prosperity to that family. And Father, that they will follow your will, your way of life, and have a, a, a great life worthy of, of all your praise and glory, Father, and them walking in it fully. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. And Chris, would you pray three, first? We give God glory for answering the prayer. Let us do that. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Yes. You're so good. Yes. Yes. So God. good. Hallelujah. So Amen. good. Chris, would you pray for um, Beverly just gave a, a prayer request for. Anna and her grandson, they need an affordable place to live. They're being evicted, and the landlord, I think, died, if I understood that correctly. Chris? Okay. Uh, Father, we thank you uh, that you uh, have us in your hearts, every single one of us, and we are in your hands. We thank you that you care about all 
uh, of our cares, and we cast those cares upon you. We pray for Anna and uh, uh, is it Beverly's grandson? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, they need they need uh, a place to live. Um, uh, they're being evicted. And you know about this, and we uh, we believe that you have a special place for them where they can uh, continue to live. Uh, in an affordable place. We thank you for your blessings upon them, and we thank you uh, that you are true to your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bye, now. I would like Catherine to close us out today. Okay. All righty. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus. Lord God, I just thank you. Thank you so much for your presence that's here with us today. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your glory in us experiencing a deeper revelation of your love like never before so that we can experience it and then share it with others, Lord Jesus. I thank you for opportunities to minister online and God ideas, God creations, Lord God, how we can reach the lost and tell the untold, Lord Jesus. I thank you for supernatural finances, increase promotions. I thank you, Lord God, for you opening the correct doors we just give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. We thank you for all you're doing all over the earth. We'll go out in joy, hope, and love in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.